We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. Former Minneapolis policeman Derek Chauvin found guilty on all counts for the death of George Floyd last May. The jury of seven women and five men, which included six people of color, worked very quickly. They didn't ask a single question during their 10 and a half hours of deliberations. Bria, it's a verdict that many Americans had been hoping for. Yeah, you're right. While, while a lot of people celebrated, others like Sacramento activist Barry Axius said it's just one victory in a sea of losses. This is one step in a road that is a long journey. We have to keep on going. You can't be celebrating this um, and rejoicing because there's so many more cases left to be finished. Advocates for social justice say the fight for equality is not over. It's a message echoed by Stevante Clark. Sacramento police shot and killed his brother, Stephon Clark, in 2018. All of me wish that this would have happened here in Sacramento. The killers who killed my brother are still walking the streets today. This is not, George Floyd never gets to come back. Stephon Clark never gets to come back. So we all lost, we're losing still. Well, Clark says he's glad Chauvin was convicted on all charges, but says there's still a long way to go. So what's next for Derek Chauvin? A jury convicted him on all three charges yesterday, and this morning, all eyes are on that sentencing. It's expected to happen in about eight weeks. Many ask now, how long could Chauvin be behind bars? ABC 10's Kevin John with the Verify team breaks it all down, and Kevin, there's a lot of factors to play in play here. That's right, Bria. There are a lot of factors here, and really, there's just a lot to digest with this whole process. So allow me to break it down for you. Take a look at your screen. First off, here is the max sentences for each charge Chauvin was found guilty on. 40 years for second degree murder, 25 years for third degree murder, and 10 years for second degree manslaughter. But here's where things get a bit interesting, Bria. According to legal experts in the state of Minnesota, these max sentences cannot be stacked on top of each other, meaning the max sentence Chauvin could get is 40 years. Now listen to this. Minnesota law uses something called presumptive sentences. That means it sets a typical range of penalties for those with no prior convictions. Now, in this particular case, between 10 and a half years and 15 years. Now, according to legal experts, the only way to give a higher sentence is if there are aggravating factors. Aggravating factors, a few of them are present in this case. One of them is whether children were present for the crime. Another is whether the defendant was in a position of authority and abused that authority. A third uh, relevant one is whether the victim was in a vulnerable position. Now, keep in mind, Chauvin waived his right to have a jury look at those factors. So now it's going to be up to the judge, Peter Cahill. Now, something else to also take note of is that under Minnesota law, two thirds of the sentence must be served in prison while the remaining can be served under supervised release. And Walt, once again, that sentencing is expected to happen within the next couple of months, about eight weeks from now. Mm. I know you and I were kind of texting back and forth, figuring out that if he's, you know, does get sentenced to 40, serves two thirds of that, he's 45, he could get out at age 70, 71 ish in the year 2046. So, um, that's all fluid. We'll know more in two months, as you mentioned. Thank you, Kevin. A lot to unpack with the conviction of Derek Chauvin. And here at ABC, we're trying to help you understand what that means going forward. So let's bring in ABC News correspondent Ike Ajachi on the ground in Minneapolis. Ike, uh, we, we visited yesterday live before the verdict. So they announced the verdict that it was going to come down. There was probably three, three and a half hours before the verdict was reached. You were out there. What was the feeling like? Was it anticipation? Were people scared? Were they worried? What was going on? People, it was a tale of two emotions, Walt. Leading up to that verdict, the city was silent. You would walk on the streets and no one would be out there. And those few people were out there talking to them. They were angry, worried, upset, and fearful that they wouldn't see justice. They wouldn't see Derek Chauvin held accountable. Time and time again, we've seen cases like this where police officers being charged with murder or manslaughter walk off on technicalities, or maybe the prosecution couldn't convict the jury otherwise. However, in this one, we saw that verdict elicit such a 
feeling of joy and jubilation from the people on the ground. You saw the video as soon as the judge said that guilty verdict. You saw complete strangers coalescing together, hugging, crying some because of the fact that they just saw the American justice system for once, maybe even in their lifetime, hold the police officer accountable, Walt. So, uh, Ike, again, after the verdict, into the evening, were, was there any trouble in, in Minneapolis or were the gatherings, um, like at George Floyd Square, uh, peaceful? Any issues at all? Well, I'll say this, you know, I'm working overnight, I tend to sleep around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'll say this, as I got into bed, as the night went on, I heard cheering from my hotel room. I even heard fireworks. That's how happy and jubilant everyone here was. You know, there was uh, several crowds outside the courthouse and, out and on the streets coming out and really just enjoying this one moment of accountability. But I want to say something. It, it is nice to see uh, the police officer being held accountable, but to see structural change, that's a completely different issue. You heard later on that night, uh, a lot of the elected leaders in this country call for police reform on Capitol Hill. Uh, they're talking about the George Floyd Justice for Policing Act that would eliminate things like no-knock warrants and, and, whole, and uh, instill measures that would hold police officers accountable. But we we do know the bifurcated nature of Capitol Hill, and that bill in and of itself would require every single Democrat to support it, including 10 Republicans, something that we haven't seen in recent time right now, Walt. Yeah, we'll see where that goes. Uh, Ike, thank you for all your personal reflections the last couple of days in and around Minneapolis. Derek Chauvin is expected to learn his sentence in about two months. In the meantime, find all of our coverage, including reaction from your community at abc10.com.